Hello, welcome to Econometrics Melody. In this video, we'll discuss about the gauss Markov theorem. So we know that OLS beta estimate, it yields a minimum mean squared either linear predictor. Similarly, OLS beta estimate, it is an unbiased estimator of the population beta because the conditional and unconditional expected value of the OLS beta estimate, this is equal to the population beta. Conditional variance of beta, this is given by sigma squared x trans, which x inverse when we AGM the condition of homo elasticity. Similarly, the unconditional variance of beta estimate, this is equal to sigma squared and the expectation across x of x trans, which x inverse. So we know that OLS beta estimate this is equal to x trans which x inverse x trans plus y and we know that for the population model y is equal to x beta plus epsilon and let us substitute the value of y from the population model so this is equal to so as the independent variable and the residual term they are orthogonal now let us see we have beta 1 this is also unbiased estimate of population beta beta 1 is equal to cy similarly let us substitute the value of y so if we take the conditional expectation of beta 1 is is constant so expectation of the residual term this would be equal to zero let me write it as zero therefore expectation of beta one condition x this is equal to beta only when this is an identity matrix and from this relationship we can construct the contender of c so c can be constructed as x inverse and in order to calculate the inverse x must be a square matrix so we can construct from this x of order n into k this can be calculated as let me call it as x inverse 0 so c can be constructed if we take k independent uh, rows from this matrix x and we take the transpose of it actually we can construct many c from this x following this process and if we operate it we get the unbiased estimate of this population beta we are going to use this property later on the product of c and matrix x this would be equal to the identity matrix as well as from this relationship we can calculate the variance of beta estimate in case of ls regression and we'll replicate this process to calculate the variance of this beta one as well is beta estimate minus beta this is equal to x trans which x inverse x trans which e and making use of expectation of product of these two terms we can calculate conditional variance of beta and we assume homoisk elasticity condition of and therefore expectation of e e transpose condition of x is equal to sigma square so finally we get it is sigma square x transpose x inverse we have seen this already and if expectation of beta 1 condition on x if this is equal to beta then p1 minus beta this is simply equal to c e and and beta it is actually the conditional mean of beta 1 so let us take b1 minus beta and let us take its transpose so this is equal to a b transpose b transpose a transpose therefore we can calculate the variance of therefore variance of beta 1 condition max so this is equal to And if we assume the condition of homoisk elasticity, therefore variance of beta 1 condition and x, this is equal to this result. Now we have beta 1 is cy and beta is x trans plus x inverse x trans plus y. And in both cases, we have y is our post multiplication term. So let us take the difference of this pre multiplication term to this d if we post multiply by x. cx is equal to i so here if cx is equal to identity matrix then only our expected value of beta 1 condition and x is equal to beta and only our beta 1 will be the unbiased estimator 
and x transpose x inverse x transpose x this is again identity matrix so this would be equal to zero therefore dx is equal to zero so if we assume d is equal to c minus x transpose x inverse x transpose then dx is equal to zero so from this relationship we can solve it for c so from this relationship we can we got this result and we know that variance of beta one condition on x now in place of c we are going to substitute this value and whenever we get dx we'll write it as zero to so this relationship in place of c we are going to substitute by this value so if we operate it this will be equal to and let us expand this and here we have dx this would be equal to zero here we have x transpose d transpose so this is equal to actually dx transpose so this is also equal to zero finally we are left with sigma square d, d transpose plus again here x transpose x and x transpose x inverse this would give the identity matrix so we are left with this term only therefore variance of beta 1 condition on x this is equal to sigma square d d transpose plus sigma square x transpose x inverse this is equal to variance of OLS beta estimate when condition on x and here d d transpose this is actually non-negative definite meaning thereby the eigenvalue of this mat d d transpose is greater than or equal to zero so this is greater than equal to zero and the variance they both are positive so we can say that variance of beta one condition on x this is actually greater than or equal to variance of beta condition on x we can say that the variance of OLS beta estimate condition on x this is either less than or equal to variance of beta 1 condition on x so they are equal only when this term is equal to zero and this term is equal to zero only when the eigenvalue of d d transpose one of the eigenvalue of d d transpose is actually equal to zero so the OLS beta estimate it generally has minimum variance in case of the classical linear regression model and this is the main spirit of the ghost marker theorem so if we have w is the vector of constant and if we take the linear combinations of the population beta and if we want the variance to be minimum then this is only when we estimate the population beta parameter by the OLS beta estimate this is the main message of the ghost markov theorem so more precisely for any vector of constant w so the minimum variance linear unbiased estimator of w transpose population beta in the classical linear regression model is this value where this b is the least square estimator so this result is the direct implication of this above result that we have proved just now and this is also very intuitive and obvious is so we need to take k independent row because in order to be able to calculate the inverse so we need to have a square matrix so we take k independent rows from this main matrix x that is we are excluding n minus k rows from this main matrix x so matrix x let us say it contains the sufficient or more information while matrix x zero it contains less information let's say in terms of variance it has less variance while x zero it has higher variance and we know that x it has complete information or at least adequate information in comparison to c x0 because here c is constructed out of this x0 and x0 it takes only the k independent rows from this main matrix x so it has less information less information means more variance or variation and when we have more information in matrix x we have less variation so from this analogy it is obvious that variance of beta 1 it should be greater than the variance of well, let's speed up. So this is an informal and intuitive way of explaining this expression or this logic and also we know that the unconditional variance of OLS beta this is given by so we can use this relationship when x is stochastic 
stochastic here means that the independent variables they are actually random variables and whose analysis can be made using the probability distribution that is which cannot be predicted precisely so in this condition as well the variance of beta can be calculated making use of this relationship while the conditional variance in case of the independent variable being non-stochastic we can calculate sigma square x sans project inverse so whether x is stochastic or non-stochastic the OLS beta estimate it is the minimum variance linear unbiased estimator of population beta so these two relationships sums up our dos markov theorem so this is it for this tutorial thank you very much for your time thank you very much econometrics melody